Welcome back to another episode of the Buckeye Bar Guys here on Buckeye Bar Talk. I'm Mike. I'm John. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the Michigan State game, uh, which will be uh, tomorrow. We're recording this on Friday the 4th. Um, so Saturday to the 5th, we'll have a game. Um, it looks like the game is on. As of now, it seems like that everything is good. We had a cancellation last week because of COVID concerns within Ohio State, um, but it seems like uh, that was a. It looks like they they could have played last week, John, and they just decided that uh, they just were close and they shut it down to stop an outbreak. From what we're hearing, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think that's the smartest decision to make, trying to preserve those last two games you know, take the one off of Illinois. So um, I feel kind of silly though for the whole year saying that team should have to forfeit because a lot of teams were probably in the same boat that they were trying to probably preserve things later on. So I, I, I apologize to the Maryland's out there that say, yeah. <laughs> I said we are in the Wisconsin's that team should have got W's on them for yeah. forfeiting. Cause I mean, honestly, it's, it is what it is when you stop and think about it. I mean, that was the smartest decision for Ohio state to make. And I mean, everybody everywhere right now are, I mean, so many games are getting canceled. I mean, at the end of the day, that is the biggest glaring issue right now I have with this COVID 2020 season is that they canceled the season, the big 10 to only reinstate it later where they should have just started at the weekend that the SEC started. Cause look, the SECs they're doing makeup games this week and, and they're doing makeup games next weekend. So, I mean, that's, it would have made more sense just to go that route and then just built that, that would have built in another four weeks for the teams. And, you know, you got to, you would have had a bye week in there. You would have had some makeup weeks in there and it was just bad judgment. It was bad judgment on the big 10 at first. They should have just moved it back a couple of weeks and then it's bad judgment, how they ended up reinstating the season. So it was like, it was poor job on both ends of it. Yeah. And you know, I mean, and I get you, you had to push it back, but if they, on it, if they rolled out the schedule that you, the second schedule with all the built-in bye weeks, you yeah. know what tomorrow, you know what tomorrow was going to be Mike tomorrow's the big 10 championship game. Yeah. We, yeah. we would have played a full season. I don't really have any doubts. We would have been in the game regardless. And you know, yeah, maybe, we would have maybe lost two or something, but you still had eight games then you're not looking at yourself only playing four games like we are right now. And everyone's saying that, well, they haven't played enough games. They don't deserve to be where they're at. Yeah. And, you know, I am nervous about that. I mean, I will, we'll probably get more into this next week. Cause I mean, you know, Michigan right now, there's a lot of ifs up in the air. It yeah. does not. I mean, if I would say that where my confidence level is, I would say I'm 80 20 that we're not playing Michigan next week. It just, it seems like they're going to be paused until Wednesday and up next think, week. I, th I think we'll get some sort of game though with somebody. If we don't get Michigan, I think something will happen. I think the big thing, I think the, what a lot of people are talking about is that it seems like Minnesota is probably going to be done for the season. It's they have a lot of players that have it. So if that's the case, um, it looks like we might get a rematch with Nebraska, which I'm fine with. I mean, yeah. right now the whole point is to get as many games into the schedule. I think if they play a game next week and then they get into the big 10 title, you know, that's at least seven games. And you know, you can are, I mean, as crappy as the big 10 has been right now, you know, you need numbers and you know, I, I still don't think, uh, I don't think Texas A&M is going to get in as much as everybody in down there wants to really argue they don't, they don't look that good anyways. You know, Alabama beat them. They beat Florida, which is looking like a good win. But if Florida ends up losing the SEC title, you know, that ends up looking like a, it doesn't really look that like a great win. Well, I mean, look, what did they struggle with Vanderbilt? Yeah. And they, you Vanderbilt know, they hasn't won a game this year. Yeah, did they struggle different games? They I mean, struggled with LSU. Who's just, you know, horse crap right now. So yeah. And they've yeah, struggled not. whole games where, you know, I mean, you can say what you want about Ohio state, Ohio state. I mean, I don't know what it is. It might be laziness. It might be, you know, just not taking somebody seriously, but I mean, Ohio state's been pretty dominant in three of their four wins in the first half when they've in Nebraska has been the most, probably that was the worst first half they played and they had probably the best second half. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they put it together played. in the second half. Yeah. 
I will say though, I'm uh, you know, uh, apparently Urban Meyer is moving to Austin. Um, what Ohio State has him they've played one game in three weeks or some nonsense like that. And I read today what CJ Hicks is decommitting and going to go to Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah. And he came out Top today. 50 it's... player in the country is going to leave Ohio state and go to Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. And he made that a pretty official today that he's like, I'm staying at Ohio state and on the urban Meyer stuff. I mean, I would say that, you know, a lot of people don't realize how close urban's become with, uh, especially, you know, both Letterman row and Buckeye scoop and, you know, Buckeye and, you know, Buckeye scoop. He's done a couple of things with them over the internet. He has the Thursday show with Letterman row. So mm -hmm. he's a lot closer with some of these, uh, some of the, the new media brands within the city than maybe he was when he's a coach. So I think a lot of people are poo pooing what some of those guys are reporting. I mean, Kirk Burton pretty much said he turned down the offer at Texas because he doesn't want to ruin his Ohio state legacy. And until I hear any different, that's what I'm going with that. He turned down the offer that he's staying in Columbus. And the way I look at it is uh, I think he's enjoying what he's doing right now. I'm never with that guy ever going to, say he's never ever ever going to coach again because i mean you and we all know what the how the passion burns inside of him but yeah uh, right and you know i i've saw a couple of things from texas people say all oh, urban's going to be back and he's gonna he's gonna come he's gonna come and we're gonna win all these national titles and you know he won two at florida at ohio state we thought he was going to win a bunch of national titles too he won one year and that's not anything poo poo in him it's just it's a hard thing to win every year and then you have a man that's burns red hot. I mean, nuclear high, right? And he has a, and he has a brain cyst and he doesn't quit on his teams. It's just, he burns out, he burns himself out and it's going to be no different at Texas. I mean, you're going to get five to seven years with them because you know what you get. He's going to go full court press for oh, all yeah. those years. And then he's just, the brain cyst is not going to be able to handle it anymore. And right. that's, and that's just, that's urban. And so <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing the, the proof is there. That's the cost of a national title. If you get, you know, one, two with urban is he's going to go 200%. You're not going to have him more than seven years. Like you said. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, his biggest glaring mistake leaving Florida is, you know, he didn't have a successor there, you know, a must, I mean, he had plenty of players that he left there, but um, I think the quality of the individual was different between Florida and Ohio state. And he's kind of even admitted that, that I think he left Ryan day, which was a handpicked guy with a much better person than, uh, you know, he left must champ, but I think he learned a lot of those lessons. So, you know, he probably, if he would take the Texas job, I think he did learn that he would recruit good quality people to uh, play for Texas. And yeah. he would probably have a handpicked successor when he was ready to step down. And, you know, so, I mean, I mean, like I said, you got to look at who's in front of the guy too, though, because I don't think Jim Trussell was, you know, and you can say all you want about tattoo gate, but I think Jim Trussell was probably for the most part recruiting, you know, good young men also. Yeah. And Oh yeah. Uh, Ohio state had some, uh, I mean, there was ain't a, the Cooper years no more. <laughs> yeah. One of those guys, a tattoo gate. I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, there's been some uh, questions about prior about, you know, maybe how, uh, you know, I've heard some stuff from different ex players. Uh, one of them is a, a coach on the Buckeyes. I mean, Hartline has never really been uh, too. Uh, I mean, he's been kind of uh, cold when Terrell priors come up in conversation. So, you know, I was, I mean, I, I was thinking about rewatching a game tonight. I don't know. Usually I go with, you know, something from like the national title years, like 2014 or the urban years, but I don't know. There was something in me today. I wanted to watch a Terrell Pryor game. You got any recommendations? I always like the Rose bowl win. Um, that's a good one. If you can find it. Um, they got uh, that. Yeah. I think it's on YouTube. I think they got the full game. Of course, yeah. probably not like HD. Or, you know, it's you know. fun. It's funny is um sometimes with finding some of those games, when you do the YouTube search for it, you can't find it. But if you go on Google and do a Google search for it, sometimes you can find the full game on YouTube then. Okay. And so because I found I've never been I have the hardest time at times finding the full game of the 06 Michigan game. And I like watching that one. And um, I actually found it the other day on YouTube or on Google 
before YouTube when you have I have a hard time finding it at different times. They yeah. am doing a full YouTube search. So that's just I found that out the other day. And there was a couple other games, a couple Penn State games that uh, I found that it's hard necessarily to find on uh, just doing a YouTube search. But you can find them doing a Google search. So I like I like rewatching the Arkansas one because we finally beat an SEC team, you know, in a bowl game. But the Arkansas one, man, that's just like that's what like people are like. Oh, you guys barely hung on to Indiana. It's like this Ohio State's been doing this crap for years. <laughs> like we blow the doors off a team and then we just let them back in the game. Like yeah, this year's definitely felt like this is like uh this is trestle trestle blowouts as they used to call them when uh he jump all over Notre Dame in 05 and then you beat him by and then Antonio Pittman has to uh, run a uh, unbelievable touchdown in the fourth quarter the you know the preserve a 14 point win they they came it back to seven i mean yeah those are trestle teams did that all the time and you know that's kind of what this year has kind of felt like a little bit where it's been like that was like you the know. Indiana game. Like I was never worried we we're gonna really lose that game. It's just like this has been this has been the mo for a while now. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we go up big and we kind of let them back in. I don't know, make Indiana look. You maybe maybe Ryan Day wanted it to look like a better win than what it was. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think they took necessarily the you know foot off the pedal or anything. There there was definitely some issues with the back end of our team that game. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get into this show. Um, we're going to try to keep this pretty quick tonight. Or we're just going to really focus on the game tomorrow. Um, we There's a lot of cancellations all across the country, so I'm not going to dig into the schedules of the games tomorrow. And, you know, because I'm not really sure who's necessary. I know there's some SEC games playing and some decent ones, but, you know. But I, you never, you just don't know this year. Like A&M's playing Auburn. I don't think a yeah. that good. I don't think Auburn's that good. I think Auburn will beat them, yeah. though. I don't know why. I just have a hunch Auburn's going to win that game. Who knows? Yeah. Auburn's offense has looked horrible at times, too. So, I mean, yeah. did they even score against Alabama? I can't even remember. I don't think so. Did they? I mean, I know every time that you I, – I, I saw Bo Hicks complete one decent pass, and then they just still didn't score on that series and where he hit the guy down the field. They might have got a field goal there, but it was like – They might have got a field goal. I don't know. I'm it's, tired of hearing people like Gary Danielson talking about Bo Hicks. Like he's some, like what the hell is Bo Hicks freaking done at Auburn? Like, I mean, is it Hicks on. or Nicks? Is it, Hicks? I don't know. It's, it might be <laughs> Nicks. Something. No one cares about him. I know he, that was good. And I felt like urban was like trying to get him too. like that dude was overrated, man. Yeah, I don't know. He sucks. But it's, I mean, th- talk about, uh, I mean, if I was Bo Jackson, I'd be calling him up being like, you got to use a different name. What's your real name? Because yeah. you're no Bo until you start There's only one Bo at Auburn and you ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I that's, come on. I mean, and I mean, the SEC, I mean, until I see Florida play Alabama, because I, you know, that's how much I really think of Georgia's team until I see Florida play Alabama. I'm not going to, I'm going to reserve judgment on how I feel about Florida. And like, even though I do like Trask, I think he's a good quarterback. It'll be yeah. interesting because, you know, Florida has a pretty good defense. Um, they're not as good as Alabama's defense, but Trask could really challenge Alabama's secondary. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how good Alabama secondary is. Cause you know, they were a little, you know, Ole Miss gave him a game earlier in the year. So, like, it'll be interesting to see what a legitimate quarterback can do against them. That's where Florida tricks people, though. Their defense isn't really that great this year. I mean, look, just look at their passing defense. They're as bad as Ohio State is. Yeah, yeah. Mac Jones uh, will throw all over them. Yeah, so that could be a shootout. That, that game will be interesting because I think that game determines some. Um, I think that'll that show us a lot about Alabama's defense is what we'll see there because they're going to try to throw on them. I think everybody right now, I mean, the A&Ms of the world who think they deserve to be in it. I mean, I saw the best graphic I saw last week was uh, you need uh, Alabama to win out. You need uh, Clemson to uh, win out and then you or Notre Dame to win out. And then you need Ohio State to win out. And that's your best chance to get A&M into the playoff because, you know. If, right. Because Florida will have two losses and then you'll get. um Clemson and if, have two losses. Yes. I still think they would put a two loss Clemson in over them. I'm going to be, be honest with you. I do. It'll be interesting to see how it is. Like uh, we, I was actually talking to dad last night. I was thinking, um, I think 
Ohio State will finish third in the poll when the yeah, final poll because whoever loses the Notre Dame Clemson game, I think will be four. They're not going to do a third, even if Notre Dame is the one that loses, even if it's a close game, they're not going to have them do a back to back week type thing. So yeah. I think, I think Clemson, if, um, or whoever, if Notre Dame, uh, if Notre Dame beats Clemson, Clemson's out, or maybe they're in as a two loss team. But even in that scenario, Ohio State's up to three, and you get a Notre Dame Ohio State playoff, which would, you know, law the TV people would love because that's uh, just going to guarantee that game's going to be just a record breaker on uh, right. You know, now, uh, my, if Notre Dame, if somehow they beat Clemson a second time, though, is there any shot that they jump Alabama as number one? Alabama has been so when you look at like the I mean, I know the the this poll is different, um, but when you look right now, they're so far ahead of everybody in the in the actual poll polls that yeah. I just they're getting so much respect. And right now they deserve it. And I mean, I've said now for a couple of weeks, they're the most complete team in the country. And honestly, the last couple of weeks I've watched Notre Dame, it'll be interesting how I feel about Notre Dame when they play, you know, a, a uh, more ready Clemson team. Right. Um, I think right now, Notre Dame is the second most complete team in the country. I'm actually more impressed this year with Notre Dame because I think he's starting to really kind of build an identity there. They play re- He's got where he gets his, he's starting to get a lot of athletes on defense and their defense looks a lot better. And he just plays ball control offense, which works for them. And if you have a good defense and you play a, an offense, you know, that can just run the ball and, you know, make t- good passes when they're needed. I mean, that's you, if you think about it, it's kind of like what the Cleveland Browns are doing this year and the teams like that can win. If you yeah. can, uh, you know, put game plans together where, you know, you control your mistakes, you know, and you don't get behind. I mean, those are winning formulas. So, I mean, you know, you know, a defense is built for that team though. Ohio yeah. State. Oh, exactly. Um, it, I, I, but I'm more impressed with Notre Dame than I've been in a lot of years. I do think they're a pretty complete team. So it'll be interesting to see going forward, how many, I think he might they might become a more of a another blue blood that's kind of back into the mix of maybe being a legitimate team going down into here. I mean, I think the best thing that they could do, and if I I I would get, I mean, playing this independent schedule where you're playing, I mean, I know you're playing more ACC games now than before, but whatever conference it is, join a conference because that gives you your 13th data point. Notre Dame will be in championship games more than they're not in championship games. And, you know, see what happens. You, you might get a shot at more playoffs because of it. Yeah, I agree. And you don't have to like load up your schedule either with, you know, every yeah. big team that wants to play you. So yeah. sometimes there, sometimes there's nothing wrong with getting yourself to the playoffs. You don't got to play every tough team to take yourself out of it. Yeah. Um. All right. So Michigan state. So looking at their stats, I mean, you, it's, okay passing the ball the running game is just horrific i mean they've got 490 total yards rushing the ball as a team i mean <laughs> that's yeah. i mean <clears throat> their best running back connor hayward you know cam's uh, younger brother who's been at michigan state for 10 years it seems like is uh he, he's ran the, he only has 179 yards he's their most he's most yards on the team for on 52 attempts so I mean, this just this just seems like a, a game. If I was Ohio State, you know, I would just maybe, you know, I might play nickel this game just so they can't throw the ball on you and just uh, tell you Lombardi's not that good. I mean, I know he had a huge game against Michigan, but that guy he has as many interceptions as he does touchdowns. Yeah. I think this could be a good game. This could be a good confidence building game for the defense, especially since we don't know who we're playing next week that, you know, they could use a, they really could use, I don't care how bad Michigan state's office, this, this Ohio state actually could use a shutout like this, that I think would ease a lot of attention, uh, you know, feelings and, you know, of, you know, and, uh, and put a lot of relief on the defense itself. If they could pitch a shutout or pitch a seven point or less win, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I think Michigan state's the perfect team to do that against. And, you know, I mean, we're still be, it's kind of, 
I mean, we, we know from what some of the reports are that we are definitely going to be getting some new players uh, because of COVID. So we don't know yet who's out, who's not, who's playing, who's not playing. So, I mean, this is going to be a real chance for a lot of green players to, you know, earn, earn their stripes, so to say. To, yeah. You know. So I mean, now, yeah, I'm, it seems ahead. like temperature is going to be okay out there. It's going to yeah. be a little bit above freezing. So. Which is good. That was the one thing I, this game was one the last week's game in Illinois and this week's game against Michigan state. That was kind of the ones I had circled because, you know, I mean, I mean, how many you, you tend to the Ohio state Michigan game, which is last week. And the normally, I mean, you usually, especially when the game's up in Michigan, you get tend to get a little bit colder and Illinois is always cold. You know, it seems like for Ohio state and windy. So I'm just like, I'm like, God, that's a real weird spot. Thanksgiving weekend to uh, have that game yeah. and then the following weekend. I mean, how many games up in Ann Arbor have we had? That's really cold and, you know, frigid, you know, on Thanksgiving weekend, you know, you're going to play a week later. And I'm just like in Michigan state, that, that game on the fifth, that could be another interesting one because, and you know, this was before the season started where you're like, th those were games where possibly weather could actually affect the game, but it seems like the weather is going to hold off and it will be, you know, on decent and it was about as good of conditions as you can get in December. I mean, we, we usually get some really cold and bad games up in East Lansing. I, I remember 16 was freezing. I think it was yeah. really windy. I don't think, I mean, JT, you know, he had as met much trouble throwing in different weather as anybody. I mean, he just, he didn't have the arm for <laughs> gust yeah. of wind, but I, I'm pretty sure Haskins 18. It was really rough too. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, I think, so. I think that game was, uh, it was really cold. I remember that that was, that was the ugly 26 to six win that, you know, we couldn't even feel good about. Yeah. We just beat a right. team by three scores, but everyone acted like we lost. Yeah. Yeah. So offensively, I'm not really seeing much that I think is going to affect anything on the Ohio state's defense, it, but Ohio state's defense as they shown this year, it's mental to them and they got to come out and they got to be the, they got to come out and prove themselves. I got to like, ask though, are they better? After last week, are they better than what we thought, or is Northwestern worse than what we thought? I don't know that. I've been asking that question about a lot of Big Ten teams this year. I mean, I just, honestly, <laughs> the Big Ten's such a crapshoot, man. I mean, Indiana might be the second best team in the conference. Uh, you know, now they're going to be without Penix, so it's like you know, you'll see how good really they are. But they might have. I mean, I mean, Northwestern. It could have just been. I mean. Wisconsin was two weeks ago, correct? That was when we played Indiana. Yeah, that's when so, Northwestern beat Wisconsin. Well, it could have been just, I mean, you remember that game with us in Iowa after the Penn State? I mean, it could have just been an emotional downfall last week because, you know, I mean, Buckeye fans know that better than anybody. That happens at times. So, Are either Iowa or Purdue, either one of them, do they have the chance to be open next Saturday? That I don't know about. I know Purdue's playing Nebraska tomorrow, right? I think I, they, I don't know, but I I would just love to uh, get either one of them next week. If, I don't if we have an open week and we could get someone to play. I I would love to be able to smack either one of those teams in the mouth. Yeah, I don't know. Really, no. I I know Minnesota's in trouble and Michigan's in trouble. That's the two I've heard. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there could be other ones in trouble. You know, the Big Ten might. Uh, you know, the Big Ten might decide to uh, pressure somebody to be in trouble because, you know, I mean, Barry Alvarez is least. Uh, I mean, I've always said one. The thing I've always said about Barry, because I always heard Barry was a very uh, outspoken uh, person in favor of Ohio State in the 14 uh, playoff committee. He understands it that, hey, you know. Ohio state making the playoff is good for everybody in the conference. At least that uh, that's extra money that we could all use right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just lost, uh, you know, how many millions of dollars from every athletic program? Like yeah. we could use just a couple of extra bucks in Ohio state. will get us that if they go to the playoffs. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's kind of the way Barry's looking at it. And, you know, the Iowa athletic director is the chairman of the committee. He's probably looking at it very much the same way that he's probably like, you know, if I can get Ohio state into this playoff, I'm going to do whatever I can to get Ohio state into this playoff because, you know, I could use that extra money. this year. Is there any chance 
and I know, I mean, I know there's contracts and stuff, but if there's not going to be fans at a game, like, is there any chance the playoff can get a different venue than the Rose Bowl for that playoff game? If you're not going to allow fans there, I mean, I was, and I've said this, I, I put this out on Twitter. Um, I think that they should probably try to, uh, they should probably tell the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl that they're the semifinals next year, and then they'll just start it from there next year. And then whoever is the next two after that goes the year later. And whoever's the next two after that goes the year after that. And they probably should just try to find one venue this year. Just do a bubble for the championship do a bubble. Have all four teams games. have full, all four teams there. You know, they play the semifinals and then the two losers go home and the two winners stay there. I mean, even if college classes are starting back up, if you know, I mean, everything's remote learning. A lot of places remote learning anyway right now. So, you know, they could have remote learning set up places there for, you know, them to do their classes and stuff. But I mean, I, I that's how I would do it. That I think that's a good idea that you could at least control the situation a lot better that way. I mean, because the worst situation they could be in if I mean, what happens if, you know, if Alabama and you know, say Alabama's playing uh, Notre Dame down in New Orleans and we're playing Clemson out in uh, Pasadena and one of those four teams get a huge outbreak and right. then that puts a semifinal game at risk. And then, I mean, what are you going to do at that point? Are you going to, whoever was fifth place who has now not been really practicing and doing anything for the last couple of weeks, you're going to be like, Hey, you know, Clemson came down with COVID uh, Texas A&M. Can you get out to Pasadena? Because uh, then they already say they're not going to do that though. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I think the smartest thing they could do is just, you create a bubble. You tell the, all the kids from all the teams, you can't, you can't intermix with each other. You can't go hang out with each other, all that stuff. This is a business trip. And, you know, you would still say no fans. I mean, I would say maybe parents and, you know, some maybe school officials, but probably the best. I mean, I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that anyway, because I'm assuming Louisiana is going to allow fans if they're doing the sugar bowl. Yeah. And, California is not going to allow fans. So that's the Rose bowl. So, I mean, it's, it's a weird situation to begin with. I, I can't remember is the championship game in Tampa this year. <clears throat> or was that last year? Ah, uh, shoot. I don't, I don't know. I know the super bowls in Florida. Is that in Miami? Yeah. I'm maybe. Not, honestly, I don't know. Oh, championship. No, the the championship game was in New Orleans last year. Because oh, okay. it was the battle for the Bayou, and they so won. Maybe, yeah, okay. and LSU won. So I don't know. I don't. I, I don't want to keep looking at my phone, and so I'm not sure where it's at this year. Yeah. All right. So I mean, Michigan State. I don't think either one of us are too concerned about this. Their defense. I mean, it's a Mel Tucker defense. Plus, these are guys that are, you know, recruited by Mark D'Antonio. So, you know, they got some players on defense. I don't mm -hmm. know necessarily who's out and who's not playing. Um, but, I mean, they do have some decent defensive numbers. I do, if, as I'm looking through here. Um, they're going to hit you hard. You know that. I mean, Mark D'Antonio and Mel Tucker have very similar philosophies in coaching defense. Oh, so yeah. I expect, you know, the Buckeyes are... I mean, they're going to be, a, they're going up against a decent defense that, you know, that's, I mean, I don't know if they have the athletes to play with Ohio state, but you know, they're going to be playing kids that want to hit you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not like you are. I'm not too scared of it. I know they're, they've been playing well though. I mean, for as, let me try to preface that they've been playing better the last couple of weeks, but like, then they get, Iowa's didn't Iowa just like, demolished yeah. them they didn't yeah, score they i don't even know if they scored on iowa i believe iowa. they had like two of their losses were really bad and then they've had um they beat michigan and northwestern so yeah and know. which i mean those are they were both top 25 wins i mean not that michigan never deserved to be there but um and we'll see we'll see about northwestern you know as the season goes on and as we get to that big 10 title game how good they really are but I'm not, I, yeah. So Indiana, I mean, they, they beat, them, Indiana beat them 24 to nothing and Iowa beat them 49 to seven. Um, yeah. You know, 
Rutgers beat them by 11, but that was a closer game. Uh, Michigan State had a lot of turnovers in that game, and still, you know, you know, I that it's, I don't think that was as big as a blowout as it looks like. Um, they still play uh, Penn State. They still play Penn State next week, and Maryland was canceled. So maybe I mean, Penn State will get the maybe they'll get a Michigan sweep too. Yeah, who knows? Um, <laughs> So what's your, let's go just quickly into our three things. So what do you think offensively? What do you, what do you want to see Ohio state do? What I think they're going to do and what I want to see them do. And this is so hard because, you know, we don't know personnel that's going to be out there yet. So I think what we're going to see, what at least they're going to really try to establish is that run game, that wide run game off tackle again. I think we're going to see like they had success against Indiana because I think Michigan State's going to try to do some more aggressive things like Indiana did. And I think they're going to try to get that established again. And hopefully that's, you know, kind of like the bread and butter of the game. And then you can stretch the field when you need to, because yeah. assuming Olave and Wilson are out there, I know, you know, that's that was always, you know, Narduzzi's thing. And even after him, they still had some, you know, good players back there. But no one on that team's covering those guys. So yeah. I don't know but, if anybody in America is covering those guys. I, no. mean, I don't see anybody in Michigan State covering them. Um, for me, I'm definitely with you on the running game. Um, again, we don't see who we don't really know who's there, who's not there um, this week. Um, except we think based off of Kevin Wilson's response yesterday on the radio show that Justin Fields will be there because he said that he's going to be on the field coaching because that way Justin has somebody to talk to. So I mean, Boy, you, you didn't know he had such a good relationship with Justin Hilliard. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's fields. <laughs> so you didn't know I, that. I think he let that one slip, which, yeah, I guess is a thing collectively, you know, knock on wood, all, all Buckeye fans bre- were breathing a sigh of relief because, you know, <laughs> even though I think that one would have got out if Justin Fields was definitely one of the positives. I, I don't see, uh, I don't know, I don't man. S- Everything's been pretty hush hush. I don't know any. Like, I think we were still speculating that Tufts one of them, but yeah, I just think that one would have got out. I mean, I think one of our media guys would have got their hands on that one. Um, How about that grade A troll job though? The other day with the pictures of the players at practice, you had walk ons Cade Stover. <laughs> I mean, they had Tommy Togiai, but yeah. I was like, oh man, like that, that is um, a primo troll job right there. Yeah. Either uh, we're going to be really putting a uh, Ryan day was not kidding us when he said that they're going to be shorthanded this weekend or uh, they're really, uh, you know, just having fun with that. <laughs> well, that's what someone's put on Facebook. They're like, oh, I don't see Justin Fields. I don't know. I get a bad idea. I'm like, if this is an indication who we have playing, uh, we're in a lot more shape than what we thought we were going into this game. So yeah. it's not just Justin Fields. Yeah. All right. So your defense, what's your defensive thing? You think you're, they're going to try to throw on you. I mean, that's their run game stinks. And the, you're great at stopping the run. So Rocky Lombardi is a horrible quarterback, but he's going to try to throw deep balls on you. And um, as long as, I mean, I don't know who our corners are going to be, but I think one's going to be Sean Wade. And so I'm just looking for Sean to, you know, shut down whoever that top receiver is that he's going against and hope to God, they can just play some consistent disciplined football in the middle of the field, you know, that they're not biting on every play that they're staying back there. They're being conservative. They're taking good tackling angles and they're not just letting huge plays gash them from their deep safety. So yeah. I hope they can do that, but I'm looking for Sean to have a good game. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save my player. Um, my player is going to be a secondary guy. Um, so I'll save secondary to when I talk about my player, but I, I want the defense aligned. Uh, I want him to hit Lombardi a lot. I mean, I mean, you know, Rocky, we both love the Rocky movies and, you know, Rocky, he get he wins his fights at the end of it. I, so I, I want this to be kind of like uh clubber lane one, but uh, you know, I want uh I want this Rocky to get beat up a lot. Like Rocky always gets beat up in his fight. So I want uh, Lang had plastered hand wraps and you know it. He had loaded gloves. 
<laughs> yeah, and so, he killed uh, Mick. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I I want uh, I want Rocky to get knocked out big time in this fight, but I want him to get I want him to be like I want him suffering a beatdown like Apollo did to him twice, and uh, <laughs> you know Drago did to him. But I want him to lose this fight. I, I just I uh, I want to see him Rocky bloodied and hurt and everything. Else. He's built like a quarterback and he throws like a. Or I'm sorry, he's built like a linebacker and he throws like a linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Like uh, I don't worry too much about that guy. Um, so your player, who do you uh, who are you really paying attention to this game? Um, well, I I dropped Sean's name that I think he's going to have a big game, but I want to see I want to see a defensive end get home a couple times. So I'm going to say Jonathan Cooper because I've been most impressed with him on that defensive line this year. So as long as he's in there, as long as he's healthy, Jonathan Cooper is my guy I'm looking for. I'm looking for him to rush Lombardi's decisions and for him to throw a couple picks because of that. Yeah, maybe Um, get a chase young strip sack. Who knows? I'll take it. Like I said, I just I want to see those defensive linemen beat him up. I want him. I want to see him on the ground a lot. Uh, if they're not sacking him, I want him to still knock him down. Um, my guys. Uh, I mean, again, this is uh, assuming he's playing as Marcus Hooker or Pryor, whoever's starting there. I want somebody to show up at safety, and you know, that's uh, if if you're going to continue to play this type of defense where they're going to have one deep safety. Well, one of these guys have to be your home run safety. They need to, they need to Marcus needs to, you know, your your hooker needs to think about his brother and, uh, (laughs) you know, or Jordan Fuller. I don't care who, you know, they need to be a deep threat safety who sits back and waits for the balls up in the air and then runs the ball down. That's it. I just that's yeah, I hope the Marcuses, both of them, I just hope they can play within themselves and get out of their own heads. Cause I think a lot of it's that. I think they just make mental errors out there that just but if you don't got the mind for it, if you don't know what your job is, there has to be someone out there that does. Yeah. And that concerns me how they've played if we haven't seen much of options from anyone else. I mean, I know there's a point where you don't want kids to lose confidence in themselves, but there's also a point where kids get beat every play and they lose confidence in themselves, you know? Yeah. And all right. So our score Buckeyes are 24 point favorites. Um, What do you think the scores for the game? So I've been seeing a lot of scores that a lot of predictions saying it's going to be, you know, closer than what I think, but you, you don't know who your personnel is. You don't know what the weather is going to end up being like, even though it says it's going to be nice. Now we know what Michigan state games bring, so it could end up being ugly. Um, I'm going to keep it consistent though. I think I said 49 to 10 on one of the forums earlier. So I'm going to keep it consistent, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's much, much closer than that. Maybe like a 20 to, you know, less than 10 type of game. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. I think it's going to be a big win for the Buckeyes, even with people out. I I just think they, they want to show themselves. I think there's going to be, uh, I think Ohio state's more in the driver's seat than some national people want to think. And maybe some of the sec schools want to think, but I think that's going to be in the back of some people's heads in Ohio state that, Hey, you know, we need to put some big point games up. Um, I'm going to go, uh, I think Michigan state's going to have one good series and they'll kick a field goal. I think it's going to be 52 to three. Hey, I do think this could be the game that they really, this could be a confidence booster type game and they'll need it. And I think that they'll be focused. So that's what I'm going with. I think they're just, when I look at Michigan state's offense, I don't know how they even, I, I could see how Indiana could score if Ohio state wasn't, if Ohio state was going to, you know, not take them seriously at a point or want the game to be over quicker. Um, I don't see where this team can score on them. Even if, uh, you know, Ohio state, maybe even if they get into a phase, part of the game where they, maybe they just want to go home. Like if, if they're not having defensive breakdowns, I don't know how Michigan state's going to cross the 50 too many times tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I think that's, will be it for tonight. Um, like I said, we wanted a quick show. It does seem like uh, everything is a go that, you know, they're planning. They were planning on heading to East Lansing today. So that's a good sign. Um, so hopefully 
uh, we'll get a much better idea who we're going to be out without this week. But whoever did test positive prior to the Illinois game will be should be back for the Big Ten title if we're in it. So, you know, I guess that's a good sign. So, so I, I got to ask you before we sign off, I, I mean, we want to see as many games as possible and that helps us. And I don't think there's anyone on the Big Ten in the Big Ten that if they were faced against us next Saturday, really puts that much of a threat, you know, depending on who's not out there tomorrow. But is there any part of you if the Big Ten would amend it and say Ohio State could get in the title game with five games played or Ohio State's going to get in because they're undefeated? Is there any part of you that just wishes next week's canceled so you'll be at full strength? Um, No. <laughs> I think they, I think in the back of the head, they need to right now, seven games looks better than six games on the thing. And it's, you know, I think it was Doug Lake Maurice that said last week, you know, everybody needs to stop worrying so much about the big 10 championship game because it's the national title is the more important thing playing big 10 championship weekend against Illinois or Iowa, or I mean, Iowa or Wisconsin that week in, in that second seeded game is just as good as uh, playing you know, Northwestern. Yeah. So I I think that you need to get to, you want to get as many games in as possible. And I would hate, I mean, if nobody else is eligible, if they do play Minnesota, you know, Nebraska, I mean, there's no, there, if you, there's nothing you can control, then there's nothing you can control. But if they could get a game scheduled, I rather than play a game just well, so. And that's more data points. Right. And even outside of the whole data point argument, though, you just want the game reps. Like you want live reps. So and that's another thing. someone said earlier that they were not that they don't believe Ohio State isn't a top four team, but I think it was a Georgia fan. But they have such an unfair advantage because their legs are going to be so fresh come playoff time. I'm like one, everybody's had bye weeks this year. So yeah. everyone's had some sort of game canceled. See, postponed. And, and, they got bye weeks. They got time between the title games and that in the playoffs. Like I want a team that knows how to play together. I want a team yeah. that's had time to gel. That's the, that's my thought too. Maybe this is just the, the over nervous Buckeye. I mean, I'm nervous going into a, a playing a Clemson or an Alabama or an Notre Dame right now, because like all those teams have got twice as many games as we do right now. I mean, Alabama is playing. This is when you start seeing Ohio state in going into November and normally playing their best football because right. you know, they've, usually knocked out all the issues that they've had start of the year. I mean, from Trussell all the way through Meyer, I mean, they were pretty unbeatable. I mean, there's games they lost in November. I mean, you remember the Michigan state loss and stuff like that, but you know, they were pretty much unbeaten in November for two decades. I mean, I mean, they have not lost many November games. No. So that makes, that makes me nervous because, you know, this is kind of like, you know, they should be a well-oiled machine by this point and they're not. And I think a lot of it has to do with that. They just, they don't have the game reps right now. And right. that makes me nervous. I don't, the fresh leg thing. I don't, I'm more nervous about, you know, Alabama looks like a complete football team. That's normally what we see of Ohio state when Ohio state is at its best. That's like last year beating Penn state, Michigan, and uh, you know, Wisconsin and back to back to back weeks. I mean, that was, though that was a, uh, Oh, that was the best Ohio state team was all year. And even though they were good for the whole season, but they were a well-oiled machine coming down the stretch. I know they struggled a little bit in the first half against Wisconsin, but there was no doubt once the second half got moving and they started putting points on the board that they were, I mean, nobody thought that they were not coming back in that game. Yeah. No, I know that's, I just, for me, I, I'd be scared the secondary against like Clemson or Alabama. I think the front seven can play with anybody. So yeah. Even even without the reps, I think the front seven can play with anybody. I think our offense could play with anybody, but it's just, you know, you you haven't had time to fix what's been going wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, right. that's that's the biggest <laughs> thing for me is uh, uh, reps are more important. Yeah. All right. Well, you think we you, we're good? Yeah, I feel good with the show. All right. So, um, well, thank you everyone for stopping by tonight. Uh, we, it seems like we're going to get a game tomorrow. I mean, I know it kind of felt confident about the Illinois stuff, but then when they pushed it back to the traveling Saturday, 
not so confident and they yeah. did the right thing. So it, I, I do feel comfortable. I feel confident we're getting a game tomorrow. So, um, you know, go Buckeyes. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we have a good victory uh, recap for you guys on Sunday or Monday. I'm John. I'm Mike. Oh, I O. Well, thank you for uh, watching here. The Buckeye bar guys here on the Buckeye bar talk uh, network. Um, Please uh, subscribe to the network, and uh, you, when you get the little notification bell, just hit that. Hit all notifications, that way you'll get alerted when all the new episodes come up. Um, comment, like the show, and uh, we hope to you join our community. Come join our bar. Like, comment, share. I'm John. That's Mike. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.